In this tutorial, we are going to go over the CX Engage user management screen. The user management screen can be accessed by going to the top toolbar, selecting user management, and hitting the users menu. This will pull up the list of all of the users that have been invited into that tenant. This is obviously the location where we will define new users in the platform or to modify an existing user in the platform. If I were to create a new user, I can click on the create button. Please bear in mind that all users are given invites to a tenant that they need to accept in order to be invited into the tenant. So if you were going to create a user, you could type in jdoe at test.com or whatever that user's email address is. If it is the first time they've ever logged into any CX Engage tenant anywhere, you'll be invited to select a role for them within the CX Engage platform and a role for them within this specific tenant on the CX Engage platform. Bearing in mind, of course, that as a multi-tenant platform, one user, in this case Jane Doe, could be a member of many different tenants in the platform and could have different rights and privileges on each one of those tenants. Now, if I were to select a user that already exists in the system, you'll notice that when I do that, it will recognize that the user already has logged in to CX Engage before and will eliminate the option to invite them into the platform. And if they're already in the tenant, we'll be reminded that they already exist on the platform and will be added into the tenant by hitting submit. So after we talk about creating a user, obviously we can go through and modify that user. You can come through and uh, request a password to be reset or to disable the account. You can change the name of the account if you wish. You can come through and define new phone numbers that this user is reachable at. In this case, we are using the default WebRTC soft phone that is built natively into your CX Engage agent desktop. If you wanted to add in, say, an emergency phone number for the agent, where this agent would be able to log in from home or from a cell phone, you can hit the plus button here. Rather than selecting the WebRTC option, you can select the PSTN option, and then you would type in the phone number that we are going to dial in order to reach this user. I can do obviously a, a simple phone number to represent that user's phone number, and then I can leave a note at in regards to what phone number this actually is. Don't forget that when you are putting a phone number in CX Engage, we do look for that number to be in a true E.164 format, which means we'll be doing a leading plus, a country code, in this case one, for the United States, and then the phone number of that, the phone number uh, in that country. So in this case, you're looking here at a full 10-digit phone number in the US. If I were to hit save, that would give me an opportunity to then select that as a path for me in a future CX Engage phone call. From this screen, I also can come through and add a user into one or more existing skills and into one or more existing groups. Groups and skills are important within CX Engage because a queue of interactions, be that a queue of phone calls or a queue of emails or a queue of chats, will look for an agent that has certain skills or certain group membership. So therefore, setting the correct skill and group membership on an agent allows that agent to receive an interaction. And we'll get into that more in the queue definition section. In this area, we can also go through and specify the presence reasons lists of the user account. In this case, this gives us the opportunity to determine which reasons a user can select for being unavailable to take a phone call. We also can determine what capacity restrictions the agent is subject to. This would be the fact that perhaps some agents can only take one phone call and nothing else, and perhaps other agents can take two chats and an email simultaneously. Those rules are set by capacity rules, and each agent can be different, given a different capacity rule to find here in their account on this specific tenant. Note here also we have the option to assign the lists of pre-programmed transfer targets that an agent can use and the templates that are accessible to the agent when responding to multimedia interactions like email or chat. It is also important to note that you can search for interactions. So I can type in AND and I'll pull up any account where AND was uh, in the string of the user's name. I also can perform bulk actions. So if I wish to simultaneously deactivate these individual users, 
I can select them. I can go to Actions and enable or disable the user by option. And notice there are other operations we can do for them, including resetting passwords, canceling or resending invitations, and reskilling the agent. In addition to the user management, we also have a robust role management system. So if I were to go under the user management and go down to roles, you'll notice that we do have the ability to create roles in our platform. There will be a series of roles that are created by default in any tenant, the administrator role, the agent role, and the supervisor role. All of the other roles that you see here have been created for our use in demonstrating the CX platform to our customers. You'll notice that each of the different roles has an extensive list of permissions that can be selected and modified. We don't allow modification of the administrator, agent, or supervisor roles, but we do invite customers to create new roles as needed that could also utilize permissions found in other roles. It's also, if you wanted to create a new role, you simply come down to the Create button, define the name of that role, and select the permissions that you wanted to add into that tenant. If you wanted to be able to bulk select permissions or to create a role that is a copy of another role, we could do that very easily using Postman and our built-in REST API. So please don't, there's multiple ways that we could actually make that happen. After we do a little bit of work on role management, it's oftentimes a good idea to take a look at the skills menu. So again, under user management and under skills, we have an option to come in here and create skills and modify skills. Although I could go to a user account and add a particular user into one or more skills, I also can come into a skill and assign one or more users to that skill keeping in mind that every user in that skill can be given a different proficiency. Proficiency is used in a queue environment where we go through and tell a queue to consider agents whose proficiency is equal to greater than less than a particular number that we define here in this tenant. Note that not every skill has to have a proficiency, but every skill may have a proficiency, and uh, that is enabled simply by going into this has proficiency operation. So the first skill here has no proficiency, the other skills here do have proficiencies. And again, proficiencies are just used to separate agents so that perhaps an agent is a lead agent on some kind of an interaction and an overflow lead agent on other kinds of interactions. And again, to create, you would simply come into the create, option, create the name of the skill, and hit submit, at which point you could add users into that skill. And again, if you have a screen with many skills, you can search for a particular skill, and you can enable or disable uh, skills as a bulk operation. We've talked about skills as being very important to queues. Another concept that's very important to queues is the concept of groups. Groups are a lot like skills in that I can create an object called a group, and I can assign one or more users to that group. Now, unlike a skill, I cannot specify a, a proficiency for a particular group. So when we talk about queues and we talk about skills and groups, it's important to think through a little bit how you might design your skills and your groups. It is oftentimes the case that a group could be a particular site an agent is sitting in. A group could represent a particular language that that agent may speak or should be considered for. Whereas a skill might be better considered as a ranking of which agent should lead on a kind of interaction. So although an agent may speak Spanish and that may be a simple yes or no and would be represented by adding the user into a Spanish group, under a skill we might say that a particular user receives a particular kind of interaction, say a support interaction before a sales interaction. We can get into that more later in the Qs tutorial. So again, this was the tutorial talking about the user management screen. We focused on the user menu. We focused on the roles, on skills, and on groups.